guys, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and welcome to another episode of ADHD and the Bible. Today I have an interesting video. Um, it was one that was kind of laid on my heart. So it's kind of random. It literally just hit me like a couple minutes ago, but it's okay because God is good. But I try to learn from my own experience to help as many people as possible because I generally have a passion for reading God's word, despite all the issues that I have, whether it be the busyness of life, um, health issues with my husband, um, the carelessness of my children, or even the way I think and comprehend or the lack of comprehension or attentiveness. With all those things, I still want to. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Like, it does not matter whatever your lack is. And when I say lack, that goes from mental health to physical means, because we know that there's a lot of individuals that are in other countries that do not readily have access to a Bible or a Bible that is up to par, whether it be their language or print large enough to read or a translation that is comprehensive. Whatever the issue is, know that God is still real. He's still true and he is a promise keeper. And Bible reading is something you can take to the Lord in prayer. Like many things that we want to keep off the table, like our money, our relationships, our jobs, um, life choices, where we're located, um, geographically, like these are things that people normally just make the decision themselves and then they come crawling to God later when things don't go according to their plan. But we have to make a habit of initially bringing everything to the feet of Jesus. And that includes any struggles we may have about Bible reading. Like I said, for myself, I always had this kind of trigger and this intrigueness in the book. So much so, let's just tell you this story right quick. And it's embarrassing, but I want to be transparent. In third or fourth grade, I noticed my teacher had a Bible in the classroom. It was one of those uh, Gideon or Gildan Bibles, you know, like the old school one that only came in like the uh, matted cover and it like about this big. And it came like in burgundy, black and green, you know, the free Bibles. But anyway, and they were in what, King James translation? I was intrigued for some reason. Like I noticed it and I looked and stared at the Bible so much in class that when people was talking to me, I literally lost my train of thought. Like I'm just like, that book is still there. And then what made me even more intrigued with it was one day during lunch, instead of her choosing to have lunch like in a cafeteria or going out like all the other teachers or going in the teacher conference room or whatever, she was in a classroom reading it. And I was like, why do you want to read a book called Holy Bible? Had no clue the magnitude or the greatness of God's holy word. It's literally God's breath. It's what he breathed out. How great is that? And we have the privilege and honor to like get all kinds of versions of this same God breathed word. But anyway, so I'm looking at her like, you make it look interesting to me. So now I want it, which I think I already had it in my mind and my heart that I wanted anyway. But because I was young and did not understand that my response to wanting things at that time, little poor, ignorant girl was to take it. So when nobody was looking, I called myself taking it. I made sure to wait till after lunch because that's when she usually would grab it. And then she came in and said, has anyone seen the Bible? And let's rewind. When I got home, matter of fact, when I was doing it, I was panicking in my heart and my mind and everything. I'm like, you should not just take it. Maybe you should ask. You shouldn't take it. Maybe you should ask. Like, conviction was so strong with me, y'all. And I was just a kid. And at this point in time, I had not confessed my sins to Christ. Didn't know anything about that at all. But the conviction was there already. And I got home and I looked and I opened it and I read in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And I was like, it's like a little 
twitch or tweaking thing happen in my mind. And I'm like, oh, there is something greater than my existence right now. There is someone who is responsible for all of this. Like, it was just like a click, 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 click. And y'all, then the guilt came in. This isn't yours. This doesn't belong to you. Get it back. And y'all, I tried to get it back. But it's almost like every time somebody was looking, watching, being alert to the point where I said, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Forget it. I think that's what happened. I don't I don't think I remember turning it back in. Not because I didn't want to, but because I it would have been a thing of confession. Like, Lord, I messed up. And not even to God, because at this time, I didn't know who God was. I didn't know what he meant to me or what he should have meant to me. But it was more so now, like, um, the lines of human and humanity, like, oh, I got to let somebody know that I stole, I messed up. I took something without permission. And it don't feel good. And because that feeling overpowered the fact that I had to make things right, I end up not making things right. And that's what I'm coming to you on the grounds of not understanding or comprehending your Bible or the illusion that you don't have time through your Bible or the attentiveness you can't have or distractions, um, hyper focus. Cause that's what a lot of individuals ADHD, uh, does or children or women or men with autism. One of their things is hyper attentive where we can put so much of our energy into one thing so badly that everything else is faded out. And this could be a plus and minus. One, most people with ADHD have really colorful conversations <laughs> and a really colorful active life where you can say they're always trying something. They're always doing something new. And it's not intentional always because me personally, I have grown to appreciate contentness where, okay, if I had to do this same thing for the rest of my life, I'm good. But it doesn't work that way because your senses are always experiencing different things. And for example, just the net rent, because I know I can be, I'm all over the place right now. Forgive me. For example. Okay. So Dollar Tree has these scripture cards, right? I, and you know, with everything in life, there's usually more than one option, right? And it was two options. And I remember sitting in the store and saying, well, I, I don't need both and I can't read both at one time. That was the logic in me. That was the common sense and wisdom in me. Like, I can't use both at one time. However, the hyperattentive side of me was like, ooh, scripture cards. Let's get them. Let's get all of them. Let's get them now because they may not be available later and you want to be able to have them and, and you want to be able to show them to your YouTube people and you want to be able to have something pretty on your desk and you want to be able to have more than one option because the box says there's only 20. So if you get two, that's 40 and there's more than 40 days in a year and th like your mind just go hyper mode. Like, but the focus is still cards. So much so that possibly... The very point and reason that I went in the Dollar Tree in the first place has left my mind because I'm so focused on these and I'm so focused on eliminating the indecisiveness and actually making a sound decision. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, obviously the cards won because I got two of them at the same time and I haven't even touched the other one. I'm sorry. Um, but and this was even the bigger issue. After a certain amount of days and time, these are no longer the hyper focus. Like just long enough to get them, to open them, to read a couple, and then now my mind is on to something else. Which you will see that in my Bible journaling, my Bible reading, my videos. It's something that I can't hide and it's something that I try to uniform, but I simply choose today to be transparent. My YouTube videos are all over the place. There's a lot of hypertension in certain things and certain subjects and certain matters, and I'm okay with it. And I've been talking to God and saying, Lord, you created me how you wanted me to be created. And maybe because someone else needs to see that God created someone like that as well. And it's not bad. We tend to look at a lot of things like it's bad. But think about the pro of this. One, 
whoever else is having the same experience will feel more comfortable engaging with God's word or fellowshipping over here on this channel because we're not judging and we already know what's up, whether we directly or indirectly mention it or even partake in making it public, you know, and I choose to be a public figure. So with that being said, I also choose to say, hey, I have problems and I'm not perfect, but God chose me. And because he chose me, I can't unchose this call and I can't unchoose this talent and gift that I have of being on YouTube and making content for people like myself. And even if you're not like me and you're more reserved and you're more controlled, maybe I can learn from you. Maybe you can actually help me. Maybe I can actually help you. So, as I said, this video is a little different, but I wanted to encourage you. I want to inspire you. I want to love on you and let you know that God know and he knew and he is knowing what to do and how to carry your life from this point forward. You just have to be woman and man enough to say, yeah, I'm a little different. Yeah, I do tend to do this and I do tend to do that. And these are some issues that I have in trying to comprehend my Bible, trying to understand it, trying to spend time in God's word. But I give it to Jesus. Jesus, take my problem, take my burden, help me because the desire is here. I want to read. I want to study. I want to learn. Help me out, God. <laughs> and he will help you. He has helped me and kept me. He has encouraged me. He has sent some of you guys to say some kind things. And hopefully I have said something to encourage you on today. It doesn't matter what the issue is evolving around your quiet time with God. There is a solution and that solution is God. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.